Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I was inspired to share with you guys a few things I will not be purchasing going forward, specifically for the year of 2024, but a lot of these are just gonna be things I will not be purchasing going forward at all unless something I have already wears out or runs out or becomes expired or something like that. So I already did do a video recently about a low buy, no buy that I'm gonna be going on for 2024. And so some of the items in today's video, a couple of them are going to overlap with what I talked about in that video. If you guys want to hear more of an in-depth uh, dive onto why I'm doing a low buy, no buy and more of my thought process and stuff like that, and you want to see a little bit more detail about some of these items, you can watch that video. Um, and you can see my red light, green light and yellow light items that are okay to buy, okay to buy with restrictions or not okay to buy at all. But in today's video, I thought of a few more things that I am just not going to be purchasing going forward. The more that I've been thinking about this and the more that I've been taking a step back and like analyzing the stuff I have, my previous spending habits, where I was throwing money away without even really thinking, like little things that add up, like drive through purchases and stuff like that. Um, you know, and I want to have a little bit of a balance. I don't want to deprive myself of all the joys and all the things I do enjoy and all the luxuries. Um, but you have to have a balance and the truth is you guys, I have been feeling just so overwhelmed. I'm tired of dealing with stuff. I'm tired of always feeling like I have something I need to declutter or I have something I have to return or I have something I have to sell because I haven't been using it or looking back and realizing we bought way too much stuff for the puppy that we never used and then having to sell that. And I just always feel like there's stuff, like I'm so tired of stuff <laughs> And so the more that I've been thinking about these things and assessing these things, the more I've been coming up with other things that I was like, I don't need to be purchasing this either. Or why did I even purchase that thing? Why am I using these things? Why did I bring this into my house? Why am I complicating my life with more stuff? And a lot of times things that we think are convenient are actually not that convenient at all. And they're actually complicating our life. This has just been happening more and more in different parts of my life. And I have just accumulated, you guys, over the last couple of years, so much stuff that I never would have dreamed to have and just too much clutter and too much stuff. And I want to start saving more money. I want to start being a little bit more um, sustainable in my purchases. I want to start feeling like I have control over my finances and where everything's going. And not just buying stuff because I justify in my head, yeah, I can get that. There's nothing wrong. I can get this. I can afford that. Just because you can afford something doesn't mean you should just go ahead and get everything. Um, so anyways, you guys, with that out of the way, let's get started in today's video. I'm going to share with you at least 10 items I am not going to be purchasing in 2024. If you guys would like to join on this bandwagon with me, leave me a couple things down below that you are going to resolve not to purchase that you think would make a really big impact in your life if you did the same. So without too much further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing, and this was what actually started this idea for this video, is K-cups. So I know I've been down this road before. I know that I've been back and forth about which way I prefer to make my coffee. And I did switch to a French press, but I found that I wasn't happy with the consistency of my coffee with the French press. I actually had a latte maker at one point and found that I just don't need fancy latte drinks <laughs> that often. I prefer just normal coffee actually. And then I've also had my Keurig on and off. And what I have found is that my preferred method to make coffee is definitely a Keurig. However, I was thinking about the amount I've been spending on, you guys know my favorite flavor of K-Cup, which is the Krispy Kreme K-Cups. I discovered them a few months ago and that is the brand I've been sticking to. I keep on repurchasing these Krispy Kreme K-Cups from Amazon. And while they are delicious, they're also about $15.99 for a box. And I don't know exactly how many is in there, but they don't last me a heck of a long time because I will drink sometimes two cups of coffee a day, maybe even three throughout the day. I love my coffee and on days off, I drink a lot of coffee throughout the day. It's just like my favorite thing. It's my vice. But I was thinking about how much I was spending on these Krispy Kreme K-Cups when I know that A, they're not that environmentally friendly. They're quite wasteful. If you go through a few of them a day, they're actually quite expensive. So I decided to switch back to my K-Cup, my reusable K-Cup that I just buy my own coffee grounds and I can make my own coffee with the K-cup, give it a rinse and reuse it again. That's what I used to do. 
it works really well but this way I can choose whatever coffee grounds I want I can get what's on sale I can get a large tub and it will literally last me like two months so instead of spending 45 or 50 dollars a month on k-cups I would now be spending five to ten dollars a month on coffee at home which is awesome um, if I'm going to be spending 45 or 50 dollars a month on coffee at home why not just go through the Tim Hortons drive through which is one thing I already don't do a lot I don't get drive through Tim Hortons very often just once in a while as a treat and that's something I don't want to take away from myself because in the grand scheme of things a $1.50 coffee here and there which I really really enjoy and I don't do that often is not going to make or break the bank. Um, and that's a little luxury I don't want to take away from myself, but something I do every single day, like what type of coffee am I using at home? That's something I thought, wow, I could really be saving some money here and also be a little bit more environmentally friendly. The next item is Whiffer. I think they're called mop pads. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but when we first got the puppy and we were in the city for a couple of days at my boyfriend's place, and it was really muddy outside because we had like a really warm winter. So you can imagine this new puppy who's house training was in and out every two and a half hours and dragging mud in with him every time. And just to make our lives easier, we decided to get a Swiffer because we thought, well, we can just quickly give the floor a Swiffer like, you know, a couple times a day if we have to just to keep on top of it. And that kind of made sense for that point in time. Now that he's fully house trained, it's just extremely wasteful. And I also think it's very lazy. Mops and mop pails have been around forever and they work perfectly fine. Plus you can remove your mop head and wash it or replace it if necessary with a different mop head. The Swiffer mop pads are extremely expensive. They smell terrible in my opinion. I hate the smell of these mop pads. I really don't like the way they smell. They're very strong. They smell like harsh chemicals. They make my house smell like harsh chemicals. I much prefer just to get out the mop, get out the mop pail, fill a pail with part vinegar, part water, give the floor a quick once over. Vinegar is one of my favorite cleaning solutions. It does a better job than most other commercial cleaning solutions you can get. It's non-toxic, it's super cheap, and I just much prefer it, and I feel good about it. I feel like my dog walking on the floor later is not going to be licking his paws and licking chemicals off of his paws. And like I said, the Swiffer mop pads are just super expensive. I also just don't need both. I'm certainly not going to switch exclusively to a Swiffer because for the mostly for the environmental reasons I just think it's incredibly wasteful to throw away one of those things every single time you clean your floor um, but also because it's just so expensive they also don't do that good of a job of cleaning like let's just call it what it is they do not do that good of a job of cleaning they're okay for spot cleaning or just quickly giving one room a quick little wipe if you have to but they don't last that long so you're stuck having to replace it and put another one on to do the next room or the upstairs and they plan it that way. I think the companies plan it that way so that you spend more money. It's so wasteful. It's so expensive. It smells bad. It smells like chemicals and it's not necessary. So I'm actually embarrassed that I even own one because it's so not minimalistic. It's like the opposite of minimalistic. It is the epitome of being convenient and wasting money and just being too lazy to get out your mop. The next thing I will not be purchasing is expensive shampoo and conditioner. Wow, do I feel like an idiot. <laughs> I got suckered in last year by all the aesthetic vanilla girl vibes, um, Sephora posts and all the pretty aesthetic feeds of people sharing Jizu products and whey products and all this stuff. And yes, the whey products are very, very nice. I have the whey shampoo and conditioner. It is really lovely. It's specifically made for fine hair, the one that I have. It has a really nice light scent. It leaves my hair feeling lightweight. It is a really nice shampoo and conditioner, but for roughly 40 to 50 dollars per item per bottle you guys that's insane i mean lucky for me i only have to wash my hair once every three to four days anyway sometimes even every five days so it lasts me a really really long time so i could justify it and say you know even though it's expensive it lasts me so long blah 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 but it could be costing me a lot less and when i compare the quality of my hair and how my hair feels from using the whey products compared to just a normal like Mark Anthony or something, something that's like moderate, like it's decent quality, but it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. The difference in how my hair feels and my scalp is not significant enough to justify spending 20 or 30 more dollars per bottle on a bottle of shampoo or conditioner. It just is not worth it to me. It doesn't mean that I'll never want to try some of these. It just means that I'm going to be a little bit more careful. For example, if I really like a shampoo and conditioner from Sephora and it's a really nice 
brand and it works really well and I like how it feels on my hair, I'm at least going to wait for the VIB sale or something like that or apply some points or use a gift card or something like that. I will not be justifying the cost of a full price bottle of shampoo and conditioner that costs 40 or $50 per bottle. That is just absolute insanity. I would never let my daughter do that. So I can't let myself do that. Um, and I really think I just got suckered in. And I think that the markup is obviously huge because there's a lot of people out there who use good old fashioned, like super cheap VO5 or Suave or Finesse or something super cheap that you can get from the dollar store or from Walmart for like $2 a bottle. And they have beautiful, healthy hair and scalps. <laughs> so I really think it's just a lot of marketing and I feel silly for, have, for getting suckered into it not going to say I don't like it. I do like it, but every time I use it, I feel guilty. And I'm like, why did I buy this? Why did I buy this? Along that same vein is another thing I'm not going to be purchasing. And that is dry shampoo. So I've been looking at underneath my sink in the bathroom and trying to figure out what do I not use? What is just sitting here and I'm not using it. The things I do use, I do use leave-in conditioners. I do use hair oils because I have long hair and my ends are dry and I am trying to grow my hair out. And that's important to me. Having healthy, soft, long hair is important to me. So those items I use all the time. Um, I recently finished off a whole bottle of hair oil from Playa, loved it. Um, but one thing that I don't use very often at all, and when I do, I don't really enjoy the feeling of it is dry shampoo. Like I said, I only wash my hair once every three to four days as it is. And by the time I wash my hair on the fourth day, it's not greasy or anything. Like I don't have an oily scalp. My hair doesn't start getting super greasy. I have very dry skin, very dry scalp. Um, so dry shampoo is something I almost never need. I used it the other day and I have this Not Your Mother Clean Freak dry shampoo, which I saw as a recommendation from Abby Young here on YouTube actually. And when I used it, I just felt like I was spraying chemical powder on my head and it didn't really do that good of a job of like absorbing the excess oil or anything. And I just thought, you know what? I would almost rather just throw my hair back in a bun. It smells so bad. It smells like chemicals. Like you can get dry shampoos that smell good, but at the end of the day, you're just spraying a whole bunch of chemicals on your scalp. And as somebody with sensitive skin, I feel like that's the last thing I should do. Um, I try to be very minimalistic with the stuff I do put on my scalp. I don't even like coloring my hair because I don't like exposing my scalp to chemicals like that. Um, so yeah, dry shampoo is just something that doesn't really make sense for me to buy. The next thing I'm not going to be purchasing, and this is another food item, is pre-packaged, pre-cooked rice. Now this is it seems like really weird, like very random, but I have been in a bad habit for the last couple of years of buying the pre-cooked like Uncle Ben's or Bistro or whatever rice that you just pop into the microwave for 90 seconds and you've got your rice there ready to go. However, especially if you're feeding a family of three, which is what we are when we eat together, myself, my boyfriend, my daughter, we're using up two bags of rice. Those bags of rice are not cheap. They're like three to $5 Canadian. So we're spending almost $10 a day on rice <laughs> for a meal. That is absolutely ridiculous when you think about if you just buy the dry uncooked rice in bulk, and how far that takes you because you spend about three or four dollars for a bag of rice and it lasts you for weeks. And I was just thinking about that today and I was like, I cannot justify purchasing these single use packet pre-cooked convenience rice anymore. It's just healthier and more economically sustainable to get dry uncooked rice or quinoa or couscous or whatever make it at home it goes so much further it lasts so much longer and it's way cheaper and it, again it's not that i can't afford those little luxury you guys honestly especially with inflation i feel like every time i go to the store i walk out with like 150 dollars worth of food and it looks like almost nothing because food has just gotten so expensive and this is the first time in years that I've actually started to look at the price of food and been like, wait a minute, should I get this? Is this too expensive? Should I try to get something that's on sale? Like it just seems crazy. And I just think if I can save 20 or 30% on my grocery bill, I'm going to. And if I have to spend 10 or 20 more minutes at the stove cooking something, saving money and not going for the convenient route, I'm going to do that. So that is something I decided. I was actually at the grocery store earlier today. I was looking at the rice and rather than getting the pre-cooked convenience option, I just grabbed a bag of uncooked basmati rice and that is what we're going to, that's what we're going to have. The next thing I am not purchasing in 2024, and this is something I already talked about in my low buy, no buy video, um, but I thought I would throw it into this video as well, just in case you're new here or you didn't see that video, and that is shoes. Shoes is something I absolutely do not need. It is an area of my wardrobe that 
does not need to be replenished, tailored to, replaced, expanded, anything. I have more than enough sneakers. I have lots of sandals. I have lots of going out shoes. I have work shoes. I have winter boots. I have everything I need. There is literally no part of my wardrobe, no outfit that is lacking when it comes to shoes. I have more than enough of everything. And in fact, I have a lot of shoes I don't wear. And I have been selling some of my shoes and trying to downsize and just wanting to get my cost per wear out of those items because it's not a very good cost per wear if you buy an expensive pair of sneakers and only wear it twice a year. So yeah, shoes is something I'm absolutely not purchasing in 2024. The only exception would be if an essential pair got destroyed. Like for example, if my work shoes got ruined or they started hurting my feet and I need them because I work 12 hour shifts as a nurse, something like that. But in terms of just blatantly shopping for shoes, that will not be happening in 2024. The next item I will not be buying in 2024 is makeup unless, well, except for mascara, that is the only thing. Everything else should last me at least throughout the year of 2024. Like I've mentioned before, I almost never wear eyeshadow. Um, I don't wear a full face of makeup every day. It takes me forever to go through things like bronzers and finishing powders and foundations and concealers. And I know that there's a shelf life on some of these items, but I honestly don't think that I will need to buy any makeup products throughout the entire year of 2024, except for mascara, which obviously goes bad a little sooner and just for the sake of your eyes and your eye health it's good to make sure you always have a fresh mascara every few months the next item i will not be buying in 2024 is fancy new skincare or skincare serums so this is an area that i really realized i needed to reel back because i developed such a love slash passion for skincare in 2023 i was trying all these korean sunscreen i ended up with like multiple backups of chemical sunscreens that i it's going to take me forever to go through them um, I was going down the serum rabbit hole. I was feeling like I needed this serum and that serum. I was being super influenced by a lot of influencers channels and skincare channels and a lot of dermatology channels, um, reviewing all these products and thinking I needed all this fancy stuff for my skin. And actually what started happening was my skin started getting really upset with me understandably because I went from my normal routine with my tried tested and true sunscreens that I loved and used. And that was all I used. And I had like a normal routine and I started incorporating all these new things and trying all these new things. And before I knew it, my skin barrier was just not happy. I kind of have my routine honed in on what I like and what works for me. My cleansers, my moisturizers, my active ingredients, my active products. And honestly, they're not much different than they were three or four years ago. For everything I've tried, I've pretty much resorted back to almost exactly what I was using before I tried anything new, which is a vitamin C serum, Adapalene or Differin for my retinoid. Vanny Cream Face Cleanser seems to be the one that works the best for me. And yeah, my moisturizers might have changed a little bit over the years, but other than that, I keep it very, very basic. And my skin is so much happier. Like my skin is so much happier today than it was a month ago. And that's because I just cut back. I just simplified and went back to the good old normal gentle basics, focused on good moisturizing and simple effective products that work not a whole smorgasbord of products and my face is already looking better and feeling better the next one is another food item and this is kind of random as well but i've been thinking about this for a while that i don't really know if i need them if they're necessary and that is individually packaged bubbly drinks or carbonated water in general i don't know if i really need it so it is something that i kind of it's kind of a habit that i started doing about a year year and a half ago is i started always drinking a carbonated water beverage in the tub whether it was a bubbly or a pellegrina or those montclair sparkling waters or something like that and i think it's just because i like the fizziness of it i like that it's cold refreshing fizzy bubbly um it just was something i enjoyed having in the tub and i still do enjoy having it while i have my nice relaxing bath but what i was noticing is that first of all it's kind of wasteful and excessive like I don't, can, I don't have other bottles of stuff in my house. Like I don't, we don't drink pop in our house. We don't drink alcohol in the house. We, so we don't accumulate like cans and bottles. It's just not something we do. So my bubbly drinks was accumulating a lot of recycling. And I also don't tend to finish a whole drink ever. Once it gets to the bottom, like third, when it starts to get kind of, um, flat and warm i don't like it and it grosses me out and i always end up dumping a little bit out and every time i do that i just think i am literally dumping water down the drain and yeah bubbly drinks are not expensive they're about six dollars for a case of 12 but that's still six dollars um once or twice a month that 
I'm going through and I don't need to be. It's a waste. I could have had ice water. I could have had tea um, or I could have just not had anything, you know, or every now and again, maybe treat myself to a nice actual glass of wine every now and again, just for like something special. But these almost everyday bubbly drinks that I just was feeling like, I think these are kind of wasteful and I just don't think I need them. I just need to simplify a little bit. And the last thing in today's video that I will not be purchasing in 2024 is any more expensive cleaning supplies. I'm going to be just using good old fashioned vinegar and water to do the bulk of my household cleaning. Um, I know I talked about this in my low by no by video. Honestly, you guys, I always just used to use vinegar and water and that did the trick for me. Vinegar and water actually cleans better than most commercial cleaning supplies. It gets your glass and your windows and your aluminum to a streak free shine. It doesn't leave behind any residue. It doesn't smell like chemicals. It smells like vinegar for a little while, then it goes away. It's not toxic. It's extremely affordable um, and it's extremely effective. And you know, I think about it like this. I think about during the whole um, pandemic situation and using Lysol cleaner to clean the house. Did it ever stop any of us from getting sick? No, it did. It absolutely did not. Every one of us got, you know what, and a couple of us got it more than once and were quite sick. And me investing all this money in antimicrobial cleaner did not do a darn thing except cost money and make my house smell like chemical. For the most part, I just like using vinegar and water to get the cleaning done for the entire house and it does the trick. And so yeah, going forward, I will not be, and, and this is hard for me because as I've told you guys before, I like cleaning and I like the way things smell. I'm a very sensorial person. So when I find a really good like antimicrobial cleaner and it smells beautiful or it smells like peppermint or something as with the last one I purchased or it smells like lemon I'm always like oh this smells so good it would make my house feel so clean and I'm always tempted to bring home new cleaners but that is something I'm not going to be doing in 2024 once I run out of the ones I have I am just going to be sticking to vinegar and water so that is it you guys those are 10 things I will not be purchasing going forward or at least for 2024 maybe in 2025 I'll have a new updated list and I'm sure I'm going to come up with more things that I'm not going to be purchasing and I'll do more videos on those things but these were things that just jumped to the front of my mind that I was like I've been using these things I've been purchasing these things totally unnecessarily wasting a ton of money being really wasteful and again not that it breaks the bank to do some of these things it's just that if I'm just willy nilly spending $10 here, $5 there, 15 or 20 or $30 here, or even $100 if it's a skincare product, and I just justify it thinking, well, I can afford this, it's fine. Sure, I can afford it, but why throw the money away? It's the principle behind it. It's not about just because you can afford it means you should buy it. It's about why am I throwing my hard earned money away on something that is essentially useless or needless or ultimately is not going to change my life when I could be saving that money, investing that money, putting it toward going on a trip. So that is today's video, you guys. I hope that this video inspired you to maybe take a look at your own spending habits and the things that you have in your house. Is there any way you can minimize or simplify where you are putting your money and the things that you're bringing into your home? Can you simplify your household cleaning? Can you simplify the way that you make coffee? Can you save money a little bit? Just all good things to think about. So thanks so much for being here with me today, you guys. I will see you all very soon in my next one. Bye for now.